Good afternoon, everybody. Today I am joined with Ian McDonald from Bright Minds. I'm at the Commodities Global Expo 2024 here in Fort Lauderdale. But with what's happened with Bright Minds stock, we thought it'd be great to do an on-the-fly interview and hear what's happening happening with the company. The stock has recently exploded, going from the dollar range all the way to recent highs of $90 in under a week. And the company raised $35 million towards their epilepsy drug in the process. So we thought, hey, everybody's talking about this stock on social media. Ian has been a frequent guest of our show in the past. So we said, hey, Ian, can you find a few minutes to hop on and tell us what's happening? So here we are with Ian McDonald. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. I'm joined with Ian McDonald from Bright Minds, which has been sort of the talk of uh, the big boards, the talk of uh, social media, FinTwits, StockTwits, Reddit. Uh, Ian, uh, first off, it's great to chat with you again. Yeah, great to see you. It's been a while, and uh, yeah, I haven't got a lot of sleep this past week, but uh, it's been it's been all positive. So no complaints from my side. So so is, so let's 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 do a full update here. Uh, what what let's let's first start with the activity in the stock. Um, did, did did you see uh, any of this coming, or did this just kind of come out of nowhere? What what's 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 going on here? I certainly wouldn't say it came out of nowhere. Um, we've been significantly undervalued for uh, for a long time here. We've really been forgotten about. And in that period, we've been driving our compounds forward, in particular, our lead asset, which is a epilepsy molecule called BMB 101. And we actually just announced a phase two clinical trial in, uh, in epilepsy around a month ago, a little over a month ago. And uh, that trial is quite similar to a trial that had been done by a competitor company called Longboard Pharmaceuticals. Longboard Pharmaceuticals has another epilepsy asset that hits the exact same receptor that we're targeting with BMB 101. And that company had great data in January um, and has really just been building on that this whole year. So if you were to rewind the clock to uh, a year ago, that company was trading below cash. Um, it was, it was a, uh, a company that, uh, didn't get a lot of respect in the market, but this data looked amazing and, and, uh, that, uh, that same company was acquired, uh, or was, there's an announcement of acquisition by a, uh, European pharmaceutical company called UC, uh, called, sorry, called Lundbeck. Uh, for two point five billion dollars on Monday, so I think that really catalyzed uh, catalyzed investor attention into our name, uh, and what we saw was a lot of fundamental buying. Um, we've had a couple of healthcare funds file on us, and I'll uh, allow uh, your listeners to to look up those filings. But uh, we had a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, healthcare long only money come into the name in the past week, and these people are largely looking at us and saying, "Okay, well." If Longboard did this, uh, we think your drug looks worst case similar. Uh, we should uh, this this valuation doesn't make sense. So we've started to close that valuation gap, but I think there is uh, th there's still quite a bit of quite a bit of room to uh, to make up with that uh, two point five billion dollar mark on our on our closest call. And you guys just raised a tremendous amount of money. I mean, like like you just don't see this uh, in the stock market. Uh, a stock go from like. I don't know, like a dollar fifty to um, to uh, over thirty bucks, and then raise. What, what was it you guys raised? Was it thirty five million? We did thirty five million non broker uh, at at the market, no discount, and four month lock up on that. So we really had um, uh, we really had some some great investors in there that wanted to get uh, wanted to get position in the name and wanted to wanted to have exposure to bright minds, and um, and. Uh, we had a good use of proceeds for that capital, which is really to accelerate our development and uh, uh, and make sure we can we can move as fast as possible in developing BMB one hundred and one into a uh, food pharmaceutical drug. So uh, maybe for our audience, you can maybe walk us through what those use of proceeds look like. Does this just go into like like like? I mean, we're here at a mining conference. It's pretty simple. You put a drill bit in the ground. You hope you find a bunch of gold, and if you do, you dig it out of the ground. It's kind of like just running a gravel bit. Uh, but um, when it comes to biotech, it's obviously a lot more complicated than that. Maybe you can give us some sort of color on sort of how that money's going to be spent. 
you know, so we'll be doing this to advance our research and development efforts. And that's everything from formulation work on, on a molecule to our phase two clinical trial, which we just announced. And, uh, yeah, that's work that will be ongoing over the next year or so. Uh, after a phase two, the obvious logical step is a phase three pivotal trial, which we will, uh, we will hope to embark on after a successful phase two trial. And at that point, it's really a, a question of, does it work? Is it safe? Uh, and if both of those hurdles are met, typically you will have a, uh, a, a drug that is approvable. So, so if I'm sort of watching this, if I'm sort of maybe one of the new investors who like the momentum in the stock and I'm sort of like, okay, well, this, this could be big. Uh, what am I looking out for out of the company now for the next uh, year? What, what should I expect in terms of uh, those next major milestones? You're really looking at execution and the biggest milestone is going to be our phase two data, which we should get sometime mid next year. Uh, and that data will really be informative of if this drug is, uh, is, is, uh, has the potential we think it has. And I think that's been significantly de-risked. You have, uh, several compounds that work on the same mechanism and they've all worked quite well. They've actually shown best in class efficacy in the case of fenfluramine and bexicaserin, which is a long words compound. So we think that we have some potential advantages over those compounds, but that's going to need to be borne out in these clinical studies that we are uh, embarking on now. All right, well, Ian, thanks for hopping on here. I, I know it's been an extremely busy week for you and it's hard for you to find the time. So we appreciate you taking the, the time to squeeze us in here and uh, let's continue to chat as you guys uh, continue to roll out on your strategy. Thanks so much for the time, guys. Great to see you again. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, let us know what you think in the comment section. Thanks, everyone.